is pricing in a strong recovery or whether it's pricing in a second wave, our work suggests that you know valuations of stay-at-home beneficiaries are kind of in line with valuations of the cyclical comeback to work beneficiaries. So, you know, I think that the market is pricing in kind of a 50-50-ish uh, uh, probability of uh, a real second wave risk at this point. Um, but it's interesting to see that what's driving the market higher, and you and I both know this, is really tech and, and kind of more of the online, um, you know, maybe more of the stay at home types of beneficiaries. So I don't think that the market is really pricing in that everything is fine and we're all gonna come back from this, you know, uh, imminently. I think this is virus versus Fed. I mean, I, I really do. Uh, you know, the, the Fed has done a great job at creating liquidity. And certainly, I, I would say fiscal stimulus, uh, I guess I would throw in there with the Fed. So maybe policy, virus versus policy broadly. Uh, but, you know, we're just, we're, we're watching closely to see, you know, uh, what impact the virus has on the economy. And I, I would just say, like, I'm not particularly surprised uh, by what's happening. We know, we know that reopening would cause an increase in, in, um, in infection rates. I think we're better prepared to handle those infections today uh, across the country than we were. Though there's going to be stress points and hot spots. These are all things that we expected to happen. And so this this idea of a W in terms of stop, start, stop, start, ups and downs, that's probably what our expected case was, you know, even going back a few months. And, and that's what we're seeing play out. So, you know, my advice is, you know, you have to own the things that you really like a lot. We have a high degree of conviction they're going to be around for a long time, even post the virus and, uh, and not pay too much attention to the daily swings. First of all, remember, we are using a new accounting practice for this recession that's never been done before. And banks are required to provide for all of the credit losses through the cycle in the current quarter. So really what you're doing is you're pulling forward estimated future losses and that's why it makes it a little bit more spectacular in the comment, Kayla, that you just made, that it's going to be the worst quarter because it'll be the worst quarter because earnings will be low, but it won't be the worst quarter because of credit losses. We're actually expecting loan losses to be quite benign. And, and that's going to be one of the big questions of the quarter, which is what are management saying about what's going to happen to credit later in the year when a lot of the government stimulus programs run off. So what we're really focused on for this quarter is what's happening with credit. Uh, we're expecting very big provisions, probably larger than they were in the first quarter. Then we're expecting provisions in the second half of the year to decline. We're expecting headwinds on revenue just because interest rates are down. We're expecting, um, we're expecting margins and net interest income to be down. But there are going to be some banks who do better than others. And the banks that start reporting on Tuesday, in particular JP Morgan and Citi, who have really excellent securities operations, those who have investment banking along the lines of sales and trading, capital raising, are going to do well. And those with mortgage businesses, we think, are going to do better.